Hi, my name is Cassidy Cook and I will be diving in the USA Diving Olympic Trials from June 18th to the 26th for a spot on the 2016 Olympic team. Cassidy Cook is an 11-year resident of the Woodlands and 2013 graduate from the Woodlands High School. She is also the fifth of six siblings. It was just complete madness everywhere we went. Like, we were all really competitive and really loud and, you know, had always grown up, um, you know, competing against one another. So that's kind of where I got my competitive nature. But um, growing up with such a big family has been so much fun and, like, such a blessing. I couldn't imagine being an only child. I can remember when they were younger, all my friends would call and say, oh, let's make a play date at the park. And I'm like, my house is a play date. So if you want to come and play with my kids, just come over. Um, but it's hectic and crazy and I, all the things that I love. So Cassidy is crazy. She was the kid that jumped off the bunk bed. She was the kid that jumped in the pool before she knew how to swim. She's always pushing the envelope and pushing the edge. Cassidy was introduced to diving at the young age of three years old. Her older sisters dove, so it was natural that she grew up at the pool. When my mom told me that, I didn't believe her at first, but then we were watching home videos one day, and little did I know I was actually three years old jumping on the board, so very young age. Her sister, Kara, who was a diver at Purdue, was the first one that started diving. And so Cassie started diving at three because she was hanging out at the pool all the time. And she was great from the minute she picked up the sport. And I can remember on her fourth birthday, um, we were at the pool and I brought cake over and the coach said, Cassidy, how old are you? And she says, I'm full. And he goes, no, Cassidy, you're five. And she goes, no, I'm full. And he said, looked at me and I said, no, she's four. And he said to me, she's gonna be great. One of the first big meets she ever did was the Pan Am Games, and she was 10 years old, and it's the United States against all the Pan American countries, and there was a girl from uh, Brazil that was beating her, and on this last dive, I saw Cassie on the side of the pool, looking at her, watching her dive, and she made a mistake, and I saw Cassie's got the look of, you know, if you make a mistake, it's like blood in the water and she's a shark. So she went up there and nailed her dive, which was an inward two and a half, which I don't think any 10 year old in the country was doing, and, um, and won that event. And um, so that's just, those are the memories that I have of her, just a, a serious competitor, always fun, always loud, but wanting to win. There was no such thing as second place. Kenny Armstrong, program director and senior coach of the Woodlands Diving Academy, has watched Cassidy grow up. She joined the academy at age nine, and from the very beginning, Kenny saw she was someone special with great potential. Probably one of the most talented kids I've ever seen that has come through the doors of our diving program. Very uh, bubbly, um, uh, directed, knows what she wants to do, and uh, does whatever she can do to go get it. At the age of 17, Cassidy paired with Christina Lucas for the synchronized diving event for the 2012 Olympic Trials. She barely missed the team. It was, a, it was a really good experience, but a really tough one because at the young age of 17, I was only half a point away from qualifying to the Olympic Games. So technically I was the alternate. So it was really, really heartbreaking, especially since it was so close. It was pretty devastating. I mean, when you have an idea and a goal of what you want to do and you fall short of it, all the work and everything that's gone through to that point in time uh, comes out at one time, and it was, it was pretty hard to handle that. Devastated by her results, Cassidy was even more determined to achieve her Olympic dreams, but her troubles had only just begun. So right after the uh, 2012 trials, I was really motivated. I was like, okay, I missed it this time, but there's other things I can improve on for the next time, and there's more competitions coming. So I started training harder, and I um, decided to start doing a different event on the platform. We were to meet in Dallas, and she went in the water wrong, and I could tell something was wrong. But there was a doctor there, and they were like, oh, she's fine, but it, just, it stiffened up that night. So I uh, took her home, and we went to the doctor, and uh, he was like, you know, we had another surgeon look at it that was from California and then the surgeon here and they're like, it's a little tear, he can take care of it. And so 
Um, she went into surgery and it was taking a long time. And uh, the nurse came out and she said, the doctor said it's gonna take a little bit longer. Uh, it, it's more serious. So after two and a half hours, he came in and he stood there and he was like, well, she had a complete 360 tear. And I just remember collapsing and it was like, this is a life changer for her because we raised her to be a person and diving is something she does, not who she is, but to have it taken away. And she was, had just gotten her scholarship to Stanford. She just had dealt with the heartbreak of not making the Olympics. And I can remember we were watching the opening ceremonies of the Olympics and she was laying in the hospital bed with her shoulder all messed up and not how we expected to see the uh, Olympics. And so she re did well on the recovery, but she went to a dive meet for USA Diving that following April and she kept saying something's not right. So I took her to this doctor here in the woodlands who is amazing. And he was like, no, something's not right. So we went in there and there was part of it that hadn't healed and he fixed that and uh, now she says she has a bionic shoulder. It's like unbelievable, you know, how good it is. I, I still pray every day, please keep her healthy, but um, she's doing great and uh, it was just, it was just very hard, like that year was so hard for her. In her mind, she didn't know if she'd ever be as good as she once was and that's a lot of, to handle for somebody that wanted to go to the Olympics. It made me realize how much I love diving. You know, you shouldn't really take anything for granted because you could be number one in the world one day and then the next day you could be going into surgery. So it's made me really appreciate uh, the health of my body and the, the sport in general. Um, I try to go through every practice enjoying everything and having fun and not taking anything for granted because, you know, losing diving for those two years was really tough on me and now it's made me really appreciate every moment I have with it. If you're at this level, I don't care if it's football, baseball, it doesn't matter what sport you're in, you're going to go through some adversity like that. You're going to have some issues with injuries. There's not one athlete that's going to be at the Olympic Games this year that hasn't gone through injury. She's dealt with it exactly the way she needed to, keeping her, her mindset and her goals pretty clear. With her health back on track, Cassidy committed herself to go all in for the upcoming Olympics in Rio. So towards the end of my sophomore year, I was struggling um, balancing diving and academics. Uh, it was just like really stressful. I mean, I wasn't uh, failing or anything, but I, my grades were still good and diving was going all right, but it was just like really stressful. I was always stressed and I was unhappy. And I was like, this is the year before the Olympics. If I'm gonna give it my all, I gotta give it my all. At the end of last year, uh, of her sophomore year of college, she said to me, I wanna take the year off and train solely for the Olympics with Kenny. And we had just gotten her back. Like, she had not been herself for two years. And I was like, oh, honey, I don't know, you know, I, I, you don't wanna give up Stanford right now and your life and, you know, who are you gonna hang out with? It's just me at home. And so, um, she was like, no, I've made a pros and cons list. This is what I want to do. I, I have to give it one shot and I have to give it my all if I want to do it. This is the Cassidy that I know. I mean, she's very focused. She is grabs a gusto in everything that she does and she is going for it with everything that she has. When she called me back, I had a mixed, mixed feelings on whether or not to go ahead and go for it. But, and I talked with my wife about it because it's not just it's not just training and going to the Olympics. It's that's a month and a half away from my family, and I've been. This will be my ninth Olympics, and uh, if she makes it. But my wife, who is a national champion diver as well, understands what it takes. Thank the Lord, um, and she realized that Cassidy started in this program when she was eight years old, and basically told me, "You got to see this kiddo through." That kind of changed my mindset. I didn't want to do it at the beginning, but uh, talking with Patty about it and Cassidy and her folks about it, and we made a decision to go for it, and, and it's worked out pretty well. Without the hectic schedule of a full-time college student, Cassidy can focus all of her time and energy on training for Rio. Um, I wake up at 6.50 every morning and get a little breakfast, and then I have training 
um, at the dry land room from 8 to 9.30. And then I go from there to the pool and train in the water from 10 to 11. And then after that, I have about an hour lunch break. Um, and depending on the day, on Mondays and Thursdays, I have Pilates from 12 to 1. And then right after that, I lift uh, from like 1.15 to 2.30. And then I'm back at the dry land gym going from 2.30 to like 3.40. And then I'm back at the pool diving from 4 to 5.30. And then I usually end my day with some sort of recovery, like ice baths, cryotherapy, or a massage. So it's, a, it's pretty hectic. Um, obviously, I wouldn't be able to do all of that if I had school as well. I'm kind of replacing the hours that I would be in class or studying with more training. It's hard to, uh, it's, it's hard to find somebody that's more directed than she is. She knows exactly what she wants to do. Um, she's changed her diet completely. Her work ethic is, I put her up against anybody in the world. If you're going to make the Olympic team, there's a level. If you're gonna go win the gold medal, there's a totally different level that you have to go to. And that's her, her goal. It's not to make the Olympic team. It's, I wanna go win the gold. And when you have that mindset, Nothing gets in the way of what you're doing. I, I put my money on her to, to see your goals through. And now, she's even closer to achieving her lifelong dream. Well, it's something that she's wanted, I, I know it sounds funny, but all her life. When, when she was four years old, we had a, um, a guy, David Pickler, who was in the Olympics back in the day, and he was training with us. And Cassidy understood what he was doing, and she said, I want to be in the Olympics. And that's what she used to call it. And if you ask anybody from that team, they'll always say, go, Cassidy, I know you can make the Olympics. I used to go up to Dave, and I'd be like, David, I'm, I'm going to be in the Olympics. So it, it's been a dream ever since I was four. It's probably the earliest memory I have of uh, a, like an actual dream or like a goal. She would go to bed at night for probably about a year. And as we would go to bed, she would say to me, do you think the Chinese are still training? Because she knew that the Chinese were the, the ones to beat. Cassidy's confidence is unmatched. And she's not just shooting to make the team, she's going for the gold. I think she, it, she deserves it, but of course everybody says that. Um, but it would be so exciting because her journey has been filled with so many pitfalls that it, it's an interesting story and I think it's motivating to people that have been hurt before or think their dream is gone, that you still work really hard and still believe in yourself and, and uh, look what can happen. I'm really happy that this whole thing has taken place because it, as I said, I, I had I was done with it. She's kind of renewed some, some old feelings inside, and uh, it's been fun. I, I like to go to war. It's definitely been um, a, a roller coaster. You have your good days and your bad days. There's some days where you're like, man, practice was awesome. I could win the Olympics today. And then there's other days where you didn't, maybe not had such a good day, and you feel a little down. So it definitely has its ups and downs, but for the most part, I've really been enjoying the ride. Um, as Kenny likes to say, life is a journey, not a destination. So I can't always be thinking about the Olympics, the Olympics, the Olympics. He's like, you gotta take it one practice at a time. You wanna enjoy the process. And I really have been enjoying the process. <laughs>